Hey everyone, this is Afro Effects, and today we're going to be covering implementing violence and death while keeping your reader's age in mind, and we're making your books keep a lighter tone constant. This is typically done on YA books with a lot of action, but can be done for any genre. Your MC getting involved with a violent or death can tarnish the perception of your character, especially in contrast to a lighthearted tone. It'd be hard to look at an MC who had just murdered somebody and still consider them a moral character, even if it wasn't defense. So how do we avoid this problem? The easiest way around this problem is to avoid human beings entirely to avoid any moral uncertainty. This allows your MCs to kill countless amounts of any entity in any gruesome way you can think of. Here's the most popular. They could be robots, undead, summon, ghosts, demonic entities, gods, demigods, uh, demon cars, animals, uh, etc. Essentially it can be anything you possibly can think of. This method is especially popular in the YA. In the Percy Jackson series, he faces off against many monsters from Greek mythology. When they're killed, they turn to dust to be returned to the underworld Tartarus. So technically, Percy or any of his fellows didn't kill anything. This kept his character in the clearest who didn't look like a murdering psycho. In my book, I've created henchmen called puppets. They're mindless creatures controlled by the villain. They're entities without a real conscience, which means why characters are free to cast fire all over them without making my characters look like lunatics. If you can't add this in, don't want to, or want some human fights, we have a few other options. In my book I have human fights as well, so I can still use these rules. Justification. An MC starting a fight while stabbing the villain without who wasn't really a th proper established threat is immoral at worst and dickish at best. There's a reason most authors have characters that react to a physical attack or clear threat. Wait until the villain throws the first punch and your character's free. Wait for his henchman to pick up a sword and threaten your characters. Your characters can even attack first if it's in defense of another, so as long as you've justified the action, you're in the good. Technique number one, knockout. This is one we all know and love. Knockouts are a shortcut to both taking the enemy out and allows your characters to keep them all high ground. Just be cautious of this one and not to fall into the common trap of using it too often. I've read books where basically every enemy is knocked out. It becomes repetitive and extremely stale quickly. Incapacitate. These methods can end fights immediately and can serve the same effect as a kill for your story. There are countless methods for this, but I'll give you a couple. You can cover your villain in ice, tease them, drug them, unarm them, trap them in a net, use a spell to freeze them, fight them until they're exhausted and can't move any longer, tie them down, use technology to remove their power. Hell, you can even make rubble fall on them to, just to the point where they can't move. These are options that vary your character's takedown methods. They can add a lot of variance to your writing and are typically inventive within your world, especially if the method is created from your world. Stupefy from Harry Potter is a good example. Number three, poetic justice. A villain's self-inflicted death is one of my favorite tropes. Your MC is in the clear if the villain shot himself with his own death ray. Maybe the villain used ancient powers which ended up killing him. Number four, injury. Making your enemy injured uh, but not able to actually fight on uh, it's, it's considered slightly incapacitating them but if you cut their arm or leg it's a little bit more severe hit them with a spell that makes them throw up endlessly or cut them and assuming it's not too evil and doesn't inflict too much damage it's fair game killing is wrong maybe your mc accidentally killed a villain i'd imagine they'd be pretty broken up about it showing this is rare in ya and most other books with a lighter tone but it can be a great character arc which can challenge you and the reader and finally, number six, wording. Be careful with your wording. Don't they things like, Sean ripped the zombie's arm off and used it to bash its brains in. Or blood squirted over Claire's face as he stabbed the demon. If your aim is to keep your tone light or keeping your books age appropriate, don't be too visual with the actions surrounding violence or death. Keep the, keep the wording down to a light tone instead of like uh, blood squirted, uh, she stabbed the demon and it turned to dust. It's a lot easier and it's not too shocking for a younger reader. And that's all the main tricks and techniques to keep your characters in the moral high ground while they murder countless henchmen and knockout villains with planks of wood. We now have no reason to see books full of knockouts. Let's bring incapacitation to the next level. And that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did get this far, remember to like it and join us in the comments. For this video, I want you to comment the most ridiculous self-imposed death of a villain you can think of or the most ridiculous way your character could knock out or incapacitate another one. I'll see you guys down there, but until then, have a great day, best of luck in the book, and take it easy.